On Christmas Day in the year 428, the Bishop of Constantinople, whose name was Nestorius, stood up to preach on the Nativity. And he preached to the people that Mary was not the Theotokos, that she was not the mother of God, that she gave birth to the humanity, the human instrument that God used, but that she was not the mother of God, the Word. And a very unusual thing took place in that cathedral that day. A layman named Eusebius, a lawyer by profession and used to public speaking, stood out from the crowd and said, the eternal word begotten before the ages had submitted also to be born a second time. This layman challenged his bishop on the floor of the cathedral for his heresy. And Nestorius did not back down. He began a whole series of sermons denouncing the idea that Mary was the mother of God. So three months after that challenge by Eusebius, another bishop named Proclus in the same cathedral said this, challenging Nestorius. The self-same was in the father's bosom and in the womb of his mother. He lay in a mother's arms while he walked upon the wings of the wind. He was adored by angels while he sat at meat with publicans. The cherubim durst not behold him while Pilate condemned him. The servant smote him and creation shuddered. He hung upon the cross, but he was not absent from the throne of glory. And while he lay in the tomb, he was spreading out the heavens like a curtain. Oh, what mystery! I see the miracles, and I proclaim the Godhead. I behold the sufferings, and I deny not the manhood. What clear proof could I want that Mary is mother of God? Even this, which met with thunderous applause from the people in the cathedral, did not stop Nestorius. And so a couple months later, St. Cyril of Alexandria wrote in a letter, I am astonished that the question should ever be raised as to whether the Holy Virgin should be called Mother of God. For it really amounts to asking, is her son God or is he not? This question of Mary being the mother of God is one that comes up even today. Many of our Protestant friends and neighbors would say that Mary is not the mother of God. And while they would probably not go so far as Nestorius, this teaching, this dogma that Mary is the Theotokos, the God-bearer, the mother of God, is of great importance not just for understanding Mary, but for understanding who the Lord Jesus is. Now, it is the most foundational dogma relating to our Blessed Mother. It is because that she was chosen to be Mother of God that she was conceived without sin in the womb, in the Immaculate Conception. It is due to her being Mother of God that she was preserved from decay at the end of her life and she was assumed into heaven. It is because of that that she is perpetual virgin and mediatrix of all graces. But it is not just about her. It's about her divine son. Because if we do not understand that Mary is the mother of God, then it's very easy to slip into the type of heresy the Nestorius had. The heresy that Jesus was merely a man who God used, or that he was a humanity that God assumed, that Mary gave birth to a human nature 
not a person. No, Mary gave birth to the eternal divine word of God, the second person of the most blessed Trinity, who in her womb became man in order to save us. This dogma matters because it confirms who our Lord Jesus is. And if he is not God the Word, if he is not God who became man to save us, then even his death on the cross would be meaningless. All of our faith ties together. Every teaching connects to other teachings. It is a whole. And when people begin to pull out one thread here or there, there's a danger of the whole portrait, the whole tapestry coming apart. Mary is indeed the mother of God. And the shortest ecumenical council in the history of the church, a couple years after Nestorius first made his sermon about this issue, ended the question. The Council of Ephesus, which met for one whole day, met to confirm that Mary is in fact the mother of God. And today we celebrate this fact and the fact that her son is truly God the Word who came among us, who became man to save us from sin. God love you.